Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. For those of you that have been following my channel for some time now, you know that before I got into YouTube, I was actually an editorial photographer and I worked primarily in the gardening industry. I worked for a company called Cornwall Publishing uh, who published gardening magazines. Cornwall started off with one magazine called Gardens West and then over the years they ended up publishing four magazines that covered the whole of Canada. I also did a number of work for Taunton Press, uh, Kitchen Garden and also Fine Gardening uh, to name a few others. And of course six years ago or seven years ago now the uh, Cornwall Publishing died the death of what a lot of magazines have done uh, and I was left kind of in the lurch and that's when I started YouTube. Now since that time I haven't really visited any gardens. I used to really enjoy photographing gardens so I thought today I would head up the road to an area called Milner Gardens which is a public garden. It's in Qualicum, it's about a 10-15 minute drive from where I live and uh, I thought I'd try my hand at trying to get some images of plants and such. Now it's going to be a huge challenge today because like last week's video and my previous video the weather has been hot and sunny for almost a month now which is just un unprecedented this time of year and it does make photography challenging especially when it comes to controlling light and I'm going to concentrate primarily on close-ups uh, I just find it easier to control the light and uh, I don't know I, I haven't I haven't done that many close-ups lately I did some last spring the wildflowers but of course this year the wildflowers came and went really really fast because of the hot weather so uh, I hope you can join me and uh, let's see what we can come up with today in uh, today's challenging uh, photographic light okay I found my first victim or should I say <laughs> subject uh, as you can see it is really harsh light uh, very contrasty it's about 12 30 in the afternoon on a bright sunny day and there's actually a wind so I couldn't have given myself much more of a challenge so what I'll do is I'm going to take a photograph first with just the light that we're getting right now so I'll just do that really quickly and what I'll do is I'll just do a bit of a comparison so this is in harsh light and what I'm going to do now is I have my umbrella here so I'm just going to grab the umbrella and uh, we're quite lucky here because this umbrella actually has a silver uh, lining to it so it might reflect a little bit of light back into the subject now this is going to be really hard I might not be able to shade the whole thing what I'm going to do is just try and shade the whole subject this is where you almost need three or four hands and I quite can't quite get all of the uh, this direct sunlight out but this is gonna have to do I might have to clone some out of it and we'll take a shot in the shade and we'll do a comparison something else I'm gonna do now I need that tripod that the video cameras on I'm gonna get the tripod and use that to hold the umbrella but I also have now I do have a scrim or a reflector at home but all the coating has come off it I haven't used it for so long it's just peeled off so I actually grabbed <laughs> this is the best thing I could find a piece of photo speed uh, luster paper I'm going to use that as a reflector so here is a direct comparison of the two raw files and you can see that the image on the right is the one with the umbrella the colors are much more vibrant uh, there's smoother tonality less contrast and less edgy 
Uh, I prefer the image on the right, but I understand that some of you may prefer the image on the left. Doesn't really matter what you prefer, it's more or less just to show you what the results are if you subdue that light. Now then, I did try to add some light by reflecting light back in with that piece of paper I had, but uh, it just didn't work out. And the reason why it didn't work out, it just wasn't large enough and I couldn't hold it there while I was also trying to hold the umbrella. So I apologize for that, but I did process the image and I'll just show you quickly how I went about doing that. Okay, now in terms of uh, editing this photograph, uh, doesn't need an awful lot. There were a couple of things that I would do. First of all, I'd get rid of all these light spots. Uh, I, unfortunately, I, I couldn't uh, give it enough shade to get rid of the background here on the, on the ground. So I'll get rid of those. You'll notice that down here is quite a bit brighter than this section here. I want to bring more attention to this area here. So probably darken this area up a little bit and then open this up here. So here's a version where I've got rid of the light spots. And now all I'm going to do very quickly is grab a linear gradient. And let's just make this a little bit smaller. So we can uh, give that a bit more of a gradual gradient. And we'll just bring the exposure down ever so slightly. Like so. And then grab a radial. And I think we'll just bring that to there, like so. And for this one, we're just going to brighten this up a little bit. And perhaps increase the white ever so slightly. Just bring that up a little bit. There we go. And that's pretty much it. Uh, as far as global adjustments, what we can do is hold down the Option key on a Mac and see where the whites are. Bring the whites up as far as I can. And same with the blacks. So this is the start and that is the finish. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm having a bit of a hard time with this light. Uh, there's some flowers here. I think they're called Betula orchids. I could be wrong there. They're a purple flower that's really pretty. Uh, but one of the issues I'm having is I'm not able to shade enough of them. So I might have to do it in two parts where I shade the background and then the foreground and then combine them. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll do the same thing as the iris. I'll take a shot without any kind of uh, reflectors or, or shading or anything like that. And then I'll take another shot where I've shaded the subject with the umbrella. Some of you are probably thinking, well, why don't you use a flash? And, and that is an option. Uh, I don't own a flash, plus I don't want to carry more gear with me than I already have. I have two tripods and umbrella, that's enough. Um, but yes, flash would be definitely an option. Thank you.
I want to take this opportunity to thank Squarespace for continuing to support my channel and sponsoring this week's video. My favorite feature of my Squarespace website is the ability to quickly and efficiently update a gallery or page from my desktop computer or on the fly using the Squarespace app from my smartphone. Loading multiple images onto a page is quick and allows changing a page or design quickly and elegantly without any coding knowledge. Sound interesting? Why not head on over to squarespace.com and try it for free? If you like the platform, use the code Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. Okay, it would seem that a lot of the flowering plants have pretty much blown out because it's been so hot. So there isn't a lot of flowering. So I've resorted to uh, photographing trees again. And uh, actually this reminds me of the image I took last week of the cedars in uh, Eden Grove. I'm gonna do the same thing. It's about layering these trees. There's about seven or eight of them. And I'm gonna focus stack uh, each of the layers. Uh, now this time the light, light is not flat, it's quite contrasty. So we have patches of light on the trees. So I'm gonna have to underexpose by about two, two and a half stops. Uh, so it's more of an experiment than anything, but I, I think it will work okay. Um, I don't know, you, you gotta try these things and, and see what you can do. So uh, let's see how this uh, turns out. quite funny really so I come to a public garden and I end up photographing western red cedar <laughs> which is just spent three weeks photographing oh uh, dear uh, it's a really nice setup actually uh, there's four trees in the foreground same trees as, as the last image and then two in the background and I filled all the gaps with the trees but what I really like is there's some warm light on the right side and then you can just see on the left side there it's a cooler color um, so I really love that combination of the warm and cool tones. Just a, a really nice, simple shot. I did have to move the, uh, the limb out of the way a little bit. Don't worry, I haven't damaged it. I just kind of bent them over so they, so that they're not in, in the frame there. Yeah, it's a really, really uh, nice little composition. And because there's so much sunshine on the path and that, it's actually reflecting light back into the bark. So that's quite nice as well. Um, I think that might be it. I'm going to see if I can find one more shot. I really haven't taken very many shots today. Uh, I've, I've been having a really hard time, to be honest. Uh, it's the challenge was to try and come out here and take some photographs, and I have done that, but uh, it, I found it really challenging today. Just it was hot and sunny, and uh, there are some things to photograph, but. You know, you have to keep wandering around because the sun keeps changing angles. Anyway, we'll see if I can find one more photograph and then uh, that'll be it for the day. All right, I think I might have found my last composition. Irises again. I'm just on my way out of the uh, gardens here and I came across these uh, yellow iris right on the side of a pond here. So uh, the hardest part is trying to find a pair of them that are in good shape and on the same plane of focus. And I think I found what I need. There's two out on the outer edge of this uh, clump of them right here. And uh, as far as lenses go, I've got the one to 200, and then I've got a 13 mil extension tube on that, and then a 1.4 teleconverter on the back of that. 
to try and get that range that I need because they're quite far out. That should work. Uh, earlier I jimmy rigged a uh, uh, my tripod <coughs> with the umbrella on because there was quite a bit of light on them but uh, it looks like the the sun has gone behind a tree so uh, it's shading them quite nicely now. So uh, I'll take the shot and uh, I think that'll be the last image of the day. So thank you once again ever so much for watching this week's video. I really appreciate it. Uh, be sure to give me the old thumbs up if you did enjoy the video and uh, leave a comment. That's always helpful as well. And as always, if you'd like to support my channel in other ways, head on over to my website. I have a number of hats like this one for sale, woolly hats, and of course my books, Antarctica, and I still have a number of copies of Quiet Light left. So please head on over there and go check those out and workshops. All right, until next time. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.